Hope you guys had a great week. Doing an end of the week recap. Makes it a bit easier for me, so try to pay attention to what's going on during the week so I kind of know what's going on during the weekend. Makes it a little bit easier me easier for those who are interested in because I really just don't have the time to do like multiple videos. Because I do other videos on another channel, plus I'm you know working at my own business and I'm gonna be working on the weekends at another hospital. For those who don't know, I am a nurse, been a nurse about 10 years, so I'll be doing another a critical care rotation someplace else at another hospital. So in terms of the investing, we'll try to do these. We'll try to save these either for Fridays or Saturdays. I got time today, so let's jump into this. So we saw a huge rally in the market for whatever reason, whatever narrative that they want to give you. It's not really important. It's all manipulation to begin with. Just like oil, if you've been paying attention, ExxonMobil, of course, did bounce off of the lows. We saw a, a little bit of a rally. Stock broke through those 56s that I was waiting to see if we were going to hold on to. We ended up breaking through, but by the end of the week, right, ended up we ended up on the high note because of what was going on with the Suez Canal. The narrative is a strong wind. <sighs> strong wind blew that huge boat <laughs> in the wrong direction, and it's like if that's what you believe, go right ahead, but it did allow for a reason to say why asset prices are going to go higher, why oil is going to be going higher because of what's going on. They're thinking it might be, uh, you know, released by the weekend. They're still you know, hard at work with that one. What was it? That one hoe, that one back hoe that they were using. It's like, my God, man. And it's like, but this is, this is, it just goes to kind of show you how though, you know, the people who are in authority, just, they just really just don't care. <laughs> it's just like, we don't, we're not even thinking of nothing elaborate. It's no elaborate scheme. It's not like, I didn't see that coming. It's just like. Yeah, it was, what what was it that blew the tanker? Oh, it was windy. It was a windy day. It was a strong wind that completely turned the barge sideways. Anyways, so oil, we saw oil got to rally. Norwegian, unfortunately, which I am still holding. I'm still holding, of course, obviously, in my M1, still holding it in the Weeble. I bought a little bit more when we came down. We saw a nice bit of a rally. We did bounce off. This is traditionally where I was thinking we were going to have some sort of a little bit of a resistance. And we see we see that right here ended up popping back against this line of resistance at the end of the week. Broke through terribly through those resistance. But the market has seen quite a bit to the downside from where we were. We look like we pulled back about 1,200 points. So typically the stocks are that are viewed a little bit on the weaker. Like, for example, Norwegian, since they're not open yet and they suspended um most of these companies most of these cruise lines suspended i believe until june but i believe norwegian went a little bit further till the end i think no the other ones were to the end of may and norwegian was till the end of june but we'll have to wait and see if there's some new information there's a lot of information about you know there's a wave in another country and you know high priest fauci said we might have another wave here and so of course that was the narrative that was utilized to kind of spook the markets about why things are going uh, you know, down in certain sectors, like for example, cruise lines, as well as um, stocks like JetBlue, right? JetBlue pulled very far back. Was an opportunity to buy if you had any cash, if you had any cash, because JetBlue, of course, is going to go up. They're thinking of moving over to sunny Florida, where they're going to be more free uh, to exercise their rights to do business. But we're, what we were going to cover was, um, we did see another rally in banks, there was news that um, the bank stocks were allowed one to uh, what's it called uh, do buybacks as well as dividends. So we could see Wells Fargo maybe within the next uh, maybe for in the near future increase their dividend because right now I believe it's only ten cents. Originally before all this, before all this it was fifty cents, and we're looking back here. I think what fifty fifty one yeah fifty one cents before. For the decline and so kind of history repeats itself i mean if you pay attention to history history often repeats itself there's a lot of you know cyclical stocks and if you're just paying attention to the narrative but don't believe the narrative but trade the narrative you don't have to believe it you don't have to believe what they tell you but at the very least kind of pay attention to reality you know they were like oh everything is going to be green but yet we're seeing oil, oil prices reach, you know, new highs. You know, they're going to go the round of the green. Everything's going to be free, no carbon. But America is buying more oil from Russia than they have in, in 2020, right? But that's, again, just not, yes, yes, we, we believe, but trade accordingly. 
also we're going to be talking about ahc actually another stock food stocks seen on the rise and of course the narrative is that because of food shortages supply chains inflation if you've been paying attention there's a lot of headlines talking about inflation 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 even though we're not really seeing inflation we're not seeing the volatility but we're not seeing the velocity of money start to pick up uh but it does give a nice narrative when you shut down certain indices a lot of the food comes from another country you start not playing nice with certain countries and they're like well we ain't gonna send you no food then we have supply chain issues right so we saw companies like heinz Kraft finally breach 40 i was waiting for the 40 breach uh still holding both in the m1 as well as the weevil i got 140 in the weevil from uh 38 oh it looks like 3882 80 38.81.9 so we'll just round it off to 3882 I got 140 and I and I sold the put. I sold a 40 put, but that's that put is good till the 16th of April. The XOM calls, on the other hand, that I bought for 59s, those I'm like praying over the next couple of trading days that we will see a pop into the 60s. We'll have to wait and see if I just basically if I wasted that if I wasted that money. I think, uh, between what I'm up, let's just let's just pull the uh, still down in. In Norwegian, as you could see, didn't have enough buying power to pick it up when it was in the low 20, when it was in the low 24s, which would have been nice to scoop up some extra shares, but I didn't have any capital that I could deploy for that as I had some other, some other picks. But as you can see, we're in KHC, Exxon Mobil, we're still in. I could, I could just basically dump the Exxon, and if I wanted to just get out, I would just lose what, 70 bucks, less, less than 70 bucks. If I just wanted to kind of wipe my hands of the position and then reallocate uh, these funds, I could do that. But I'm going to wait and see. We're going to roll the dice and see if oil still trades higher. If they can't get the boat out, uh, if they can't get the evergreen out of the canal, we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait and see how that works out. But, of course, they did push oil up very high, and perhaps that was the route that we wanted to go all along. Like I said, they, what was it? I think it was Morgan Stanley that said 80 a barrel, so... More than likely, we're gonna hit. We're gonna hit it. I think we're gonna actually go over 80 a barrel. Probably reach 100 a barrel, but that's just my opinion. Still holding on to those Roblox. Those are, I should have could have, could have tra traded in none of that one. Um, the tanker TK tankers. We talked about that one. We've been in and out of that trade back and forth. I sold a little bit today. I did have 110. I sold 60 at 15. I want to say 1520. 1521 it did hit 1540 something i believe actually excuse me i we hit 60s again trying to push through those 16s we'll have to wait and see it was a real nice deal if you bought it on the pullback right i bought a little bit on the pullback i sold i sold most of what i had I should, excuse me i sold 60 shares of what i had today at uh, 1521 and i basically reallocated that to other other stocks messed around a little bit with Viacom, I bought five shares of Viacom. I saw it. I I, I put an order order in down here at uh, at forty and thirty six. Originally, I was forty eight and forty four, and then I saw a real strong pullback when it got halted. And I was like, you know what? Let's try for forty four and forty. And then I was like, you know what? Let's try forty and thirty six. So I ended up picking up five at forty dollars. Sold two of those shares at forty eight. No, no, forty seven seventy. And we're holding on to those last three. I'm up 21%. Not exactly that big a deal on five shares. Last one, of course, is Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo still waiting for that 40 breach. We did breach again, right? We did retest 40s. We did bounce off of 38s. So that's a good sign. Retesting 39s. Intraday, we did breach 40s. So we're waiting. We're waiting again. Again, holding on to Wells Fargo. I got 89 shares here in the Weeble. And I still have the same allotment that I had in my other account. I did. I'm still watching U.S. Steel. U.S. Steel is another company. I bought it way too early. And that's typically the story of my life. Instead of just paying attention and waiting for opportunities to buy it at the at the uh, resistance, you know, at the support level down here, ended up buying, buying up here. We did end up closing above where I am long. I'm long at like 22 19 or something like that. What $1,000 worth. And we came way far down. And I should have just been real patient, especially on that pullback. But... We're seeing the market rally for whatever reason that they want to give us. So I'll be watching U.S. Steel companies like Baba. 
Baba on the pullback actually breached. We actually breached those 225s. We saw a bit of a rally and we closed above. And of course, the narrative is one, sanctions back and forth, right? U.S. is putting sanctions on China. Uh, the EU is putting sanctions on China. And then China went and threw uh, sanctions on the EU. And so this is, this is basically the narrative that, that is playing out within the free market, right? And so the, the other reason is that the SEC uh, also applied basically regulations for uh, you know, CDRs or companies that are companies that are in China, but that are traded on the New York Stock Exchange, which is why you saw companies like, for example, JD with a hard pullback, companies like Baidu, hard pullbacks. And it was because of worries of delisting, right? I, I highly doubt that they're going to go that route. They're not that stupid, but it does provide for buying opportunities. And if you were paying attention to Baidu, you could have picked up some shares right at the 200-day moving average. I mean, that's a clean move right there. You could have easily cleaned up some of those 170s, and you would have been sitting pretty up 20% just in one day. But unfortunately, I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention to that stock. I was paying attention to the, some other stuff. Um, that i had going on so but i do like jd uh I, I do like jd i'm actually watching the stock that i will be watching is jd if i'm if jd comes down here which i'm not quite sure but for me jd i would like to buy anywhere between and eh, i'll be as cheap as possible and i'll say 48 dollars. if jd pulls back and for whatever reason somebody does something stupid I would pay attention to stocks like JD because you never know when JD can become a Viacom and you perceive a buying opportunity where you buy a bounce off of a moving average and you net yourself a quick 25% intraday. So these are the companies that you should be paying attention to Viacom, JD, Baidu. I would pay attention to a lot of these Chinese stocks because this is the narrative, right? This is the narrative that's going on stocks like Baba. So if, if you like any of these companies, any of these companies that you particularly like, you've read up on the balance sheet, you like the business model, and you're looking to buy them on the cheaps, these are the opportunities, especially stocks like like, uh, like Baba that is trading below the 200-day moving average, as well as stocks like, for example, CRM. CRM, Salesforce, they are primarily utilized in places like hotels. Ain't nobody traveling, so nobody using, nobody using hotels. And so this is why we're finally seeing, again, a breach of a support of two tens i believe it's two tens yes we see a breach of two tens the market retests above we'll have to wait and see if salesforce does sell off for me what i will be watching i will be watching we're going to look long term right all the way back from 2019 for me i like 170s salesforce pulls back at 170 i might be a buyer depending upon what's going on in the world but for me i like 70s if 170s don't look good I'll pay attention maybe right around here, 118s, 130s would be your next area of support, right? We should see that right there. You should be able to see that right there, right about 120s would be your next area of support where if we do hit those 170s and things aren't looking all that great, well, we're going to hold to those 120s or they're about, or you could just be like, I'm going to buy in here. Right? I'm going to buy anywhere in here because this is the longest period of time where the stock basically settled. And so... I know that eventually there will the buyers will step in right so these are the buying opportunities that i will be paying attention to again just reiterating food stocks which i talked multiple videos about we're seeing stocks like craft craft move to the upside um, flo actually had some good moves to the upside right flo 10 10 percent to the upside i believe uh, again right the narrative and you see the gap down look at this look at this shakeout right from 62s it gaps all the way down to 58s and then it re rallies right back up to 61s right so when you see stuff like this you have to realize that these are buying opportunities they're shaking the tree right they're shaking the tree they're trying to shake people out but you have to know what the narrative you have to know the overall direction that we're going is higher prices in food you've been hearing powell like i don't i don't see inflation right powell's like what inflation Gas prices up 60%. I don't see nothing, right? But you have to know that you have to know the narrative. You have to know which direction is going. They're going to try to shake people out of certain indices, like, for example, oil, right? You're seeing shakeouts in oil. It was a big pullback in oil. 12% pullback in oil. Same thing. What, 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 what are we seeing across the board, right? I talked about Kellogg's, right? You could have bought Kellogg's on here. I had been buying it for a little bit, up 12%. 
And what did I say about Coca-Cola? As soon as we breach those 50s, right? As soon as we breach those 51s, we're going to be retesting those 54s. Now, again, the issue with Coca-Cola was primarily the restaurants because that's where mostly Coca-Cola sells a lot of their products. But we're seeing a lot more openings, you know, with the summertime restaurants that maybe we're not seeing patrons are now seeing more patrons, maybe uh, bars, you know, we're seeing more obviously in bars, you know, we want that Jack and Coke, right? So by me, the bars were crowded. I mean, packed. I was like, I thought it was 25% capacity. This looks like 100%. But hey, sometimes you got to do what you got to do to stay afloat. And it's just funny as a, it's funny as a side note, because I never, I never wear a mask. I've never worn a mask the entire pandemic, right? And it's just because I know, I know what's going on. So I never wore a mask. And it's just funny when I see people sitting down in a crowded restaurant and they watch me walking by without a mask and I get like this dirty look. Or my favorite is the, 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 people, or, or the people that are like smoking and they got their mask like right here around their chin and they're smoking and then they'll see me walk by and then they, they put their mask over their face and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. But anyway, kind of is what, it kind of is what it is. So I think that's what, what that's what we I will be keeping my eye on. Keeping my eye on Chinese stocks. There's a little bit of disruption going on, trying to trying to flex its muscles a little bit, you know, letting the EU and America know that in case you forgot, you buy your stuff from me, right? So which is why China finally feeling a little bit more uh, ballsy, putting sanctions on the EU. People were like, what? <laughs> They're like what? And that was that was really interesting. That was really interesting to read. You can Google. There's plenty of articles out there talking about the sanctions that are going on back and forth between you know EU puts EU puts sanctions on China because of the, uh, the genocide of the we of the Uyghurs, and America did it either for that narrative or, so, or for some other reason. Uh, that's really not the real reason. But of course, the, the recent news, of course, is Joe Biden invited who was it? Russia and China. And they were like, let's have a climate convention. I'm just like, yeah, I'll just out here playing games, man. People can just can't keep it real. But this is the narrative, of course. Um, this is the narrative that basically is out there. And so you have to pay attention to other stuff that is going on and try to think one step ahead, right? Because these people are making money. We have to do our best to be out there making money. Uh, again, at the end of the week, still up in uh, my other account, doing fairly well. This is this was my old account that I was actually down. Last year in twenty in twenty twenty, I was this this account went all the way down to uh, thirteen thousand. So, a bit of a move to the upside in terms of uh, my M one account. We were back up close. I was actually down sixteen k. My 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 I, I was down two k in one week, and so we saw a little a nice bit of a rally uh, in terms of for the we'll go for the week for the week we made. 600 on the week i was down like two grand at one point on today we pulled up almost 1300 and currently for the month we're sitting up about 4500 with 233 of that in dividends and so still holding very much the same positions um i've i've openly spoken about what i have mo i was another one making huge moves uh, mo making huge moves to the upside right they're 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 also benefiting because of the shortages and of course this is a stock that has been suppressed for quite some time and like i said people are going to be looking for stocks that have been suppressed they're looking for undervalued stocks for companies that do make money and of course ultra group is a company that pays a look at that seven percent where it's at now paying seven percent dividend um of course feel free to follow me on social media as i said i'm typically only going only going to be doing a you know the end of the week and stock to watch a video we basically do that all in one but if i do see something new going on i typically will tweet it out if i come across something um you know during the daytime or early morning or there's some news i typically will put uh, will post it um during the week about stocks to watch again bgs food stock another food stock that I, we were talking about seeing a nice little move to the upside finally a breach again above 32s and now we're up another a little over two and a half percent up 86 percent so we'll see if bgs foods is going to be making some more moves to the upside and that's that's what i said a couple about a month ago that i was going to be watching was food stocks so we're seeing stocks like uh, tyson tyson did breach to the downside quite a bit and then we rallied really strong back up to 76s so you, like i said we were i was watching for the opportunity where we were going to retest those 74s like i said in my last video we were retesting and then of course it did shoot back up 
uh, about 4%. So we'll see where Tyson is going to make its move. We'll see if Tyson is going to retest those 90s uh, in the future. Walgreens, another stock, a little bit off of its highs. So I'll be keeping watching this, waiting for those 50 for that 55 breach. Um, IBM. IBM was a stock we talked about way back. And I said, finally, when the stock breached those 132s, that we we're going to see a nice, sharp move to the upside. And so we're currently sitting at um, 136s. Those were bought, I believe, at 118 and change. Right, so yeah, 118.94s. Don't have a lot. I only put in, right, we've got about 1,700 in it. We're up to 218. I'll take it. Does pay a little bit of a dividend. Did keep me diversified. Sometimes I, sometimes I do feel I am a, a little too diversified, but it kind of is what it is. Sometimes I find so many stocks and I just don't have enough capital. Uh, but like I said, heavily into food stocks like, like um, Coca Cola, uh, Pfizer, I bought just for, for the dividend. You know, stocks like Coca Cola, I probably should have just put all these in one, but it is what it is. We're doing just fine in terms of the portfolio. Um, nearing the end of the month, we got a couple of days, so that's basically where I'll be keeping my eye out. Those those calls that I have in Exxon Mobil, we'll see if Exxon Mobil breaches again those 59s or a retest, which would be fantastic. So those calls will come in the money. Hoping to see um, KHC Heinz hold above forty dollars, and we're waiting for a breach in wells fargo uh, a breach above 40 right i called i talked i talked extensively about our areas of resistance and why they're areas of resistance and i'll leave a link or at the end of the video you'll be able to see it and like i said chinese stocks jd bava stocks like um salesforce crm baidu keep your eye out for the neo right i'm glad i sold the neo i sold neo at like 40 it was up here when i sold it i think it was like around here around 43s and neo is now pulling now we're seeing a pullback more than likely going to bounce off the moving average and they halted um, basically neo halted production of cars because of semiconductor because of semiconductors which was hot semiconductors were hot all weekend especially if you were in stocks like intel other ones like amd not so hot mu not not okay but the real the real mover was intel Intel was the real one that's been making its move ever since that huge move. Actually, it was here, excuse me. Uh, it was actually here, that huge move to the downside where it gapped down fairly far down. And then again, we saw another gap down, down here, uh, down into the low 40s. Uh, and then, of course, making a huge move up to the upside if you were paying attention to any of these stocks that we had spoken about. But I'm going to leave it there. Feel free, of course, if you have anything other, anything interesting to say about any of these plays or if you have anything uh, that you're watching yourself for your free of course to share it with me i do i would definitely appreciate it thanks for watching and i'll check you out next time of course feel free to like comment and subscribe